So the supremacy of Christ stated next, the supremacy of, of Jesus over religious ritual. And we're in verses 22 to 26. What's the scene here? Uh, well, Jesus is out in, in the Judean countryside with his disciples and they're baptising people. Uh, this will be water baptism and it's most likely that it's the disciples who are actually doing the baptising. Uh, but under Jesus' authority, that's what uh, chapter, two, chapter 4 verse 2 tells us. Uh, how it happened. Uh, and people were coming to them to be baptised. Great, yeah? Well, absolutely. But there's a bit of a, a, a bit of territorialism going on. You see, John the Baptist was still active in ministry. He was absolutely fine with, with Jesus getting busy. Uh, but John the Baptist was still active in ministry. And uh, th there was... Uh, Something going on because he was the one who was supposed to be baptising, wasn't he? Well, that's what his followers thought anyway. And there ended up being a bit of a, an argument, a dispute between a certain Jew, we don't know who it was, and John's disciples. But we do have an idea of what it was about. The argument was over the matter of ceremonial washing. Now, that sounds a bit obscure to us, doesn't it? But ceremonial washing was something that the Old Testament law says had to be done. Uh, there are lots of laws in, in the first five books of the Bible uh, about washing or all sorts of, at all sorts of times. It was to signify being made clean from sin. Uh, now, the Pharisees had taken the ceremonial washing and, and added all sorts of other rules surrounding it. And they've forgotten that it signifies things. They thought it did the actual job itself. Now, modern religious Jewish people still follow many of those things that the Pharisees uh, introduced. Uh, rules designed to make you religiously clean from sin as long as you followed them precisely. And what was John's baptism about, though? Well, as we saw last week, washing with water signifies God washing away your sin. It, it's a sign. And John was baptising with water, with water. And we know from elsewhere in the Bible that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, a baptism that signified being washed clean from sin by God. So it doesn't take much to uh, reconstruct what was likely going on here, does it? Uh, there was someone saying that you must do X, Y and Z in this particular way, in this particular order, in order to be acceptably clean for God to be cleaned up from your sin. And John's followers will be saying the same as what John was saying. He was preparing the way for the Lord by offering a baptism of repentance, a baptism that was an outward sign, washing with water, of an inward reality, true repentance of the heart. So we have an argument here between, on one hand, uh, someone who uh, who was tied to religious ritual and on the other hand someone or a group of people who were preaching repentance and faith. The man arguing with John's disciples thought that it was outward signs that actually made you clean before God that he didn't think they were signs he thought they were actual washing of actual sin and, and getting rid of it in, in a particular way. But John and his, his disciples knew it was a heart attitude before God that mattered. And no amount of ceremonial washing and no amount of religious ritual can make us clean before God. Think of uh, Lady Macbeth. Out damn spot out. She couldn't wash away her guilt, could she? It's impossible to do it through ceremonial washing. Only a repentant heart and the inward working of the Holy Spirit can make us clean before God. And don't think that just because uh, we're, we're evangelicals that we don't have our own rituals too. Doesn't our world absolutely love outward signs of conformity? Outward signs that make us acceptable in certain situations. Uh, the pandemic has really brought that to the fore, hasn't it? Almost religious behaviours make us acceptable in the sight of wider society and in the sight of the government some of which have their grounding in science, others of which are, are much more just superstitious. Of course, 
that love for outward signs is just a symptom of the state of the human heart inwardly, isn't it? So it would be it would be astonishing if we didn't have uh, some love for outward signs showing our acceptableness in church. It would be astonishing, wouldn't it, if we weren't kind of pulled that way? Do we dress right for church? Does it matter if someone comes in ripped jeans, for instance? Or, or do we think that uh, tidiness is a mark of spiritual cleanliness? Uh, do we speak in the right accent, southernish, or, or at least a, a much softened East Yorkshire accent? Does that make us more spiritually clean than someone who speaks with a more pronounced local accent or, or an accent from somewhere else? Are we a part of uh, the, a right-shaped family? Uh, yes, godly living is absolutely important and it does matter. But sometimes stuff has happened in the past, hasn't it, that shapes our, our present. It shapes where we are now. It is being a mum and dad with a few kids a mark of, of spiritual uh, cleanliness. No, it's not, is it? Single parents are absolutely equally welcome as, as part of the church family because sometimes stuff has happened in the past that affects the present now. And that stuff might not have had anything to do uh, it, with, with the fault of, of those people, or it might have done, and they may well be very, very repentant of what's happened. What's in the heart matters far more than outward appearances, doesn't it? We know that, really but we forget it. Ceremonial washing, looking right in front of others, doesn't make us any more acceptable to God. Only a repentant heart and the inward working of the Holy Spirit can do that. We need to check ourselves, don't we, as a church, uh, that we really, really get that and practice it. Why? Because Jesus is supreme over religious ritual. If if he's central in our church, then we'll welcome with open arms people who look and sound different and are in different home setups from us. We'll welcome with open arms people whose lives look very different from ours. We'll welcome them on the terms that Jesus welcomed us as sinners in need of transformation. Not transformation of appearance necessarily, uh, not accent or even of, of circumstances, but transformation of the heart. Because Jesus is supreme over religious ritual. Next, the supremacy of Jesus in ministry.